Hi guys, it's Cindy Lynn with my inky fingers. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel and blog for Ways to Use It Wednesday. And I'm going to show you a completely different way to use your pigment sprinkles. Now, there's the traditional way where we just sprinkle them on some watercolor paper, add some water, and just kind of create a huge mess. And that's fun, and I'm sure everybody's tried it. Uh, we're still going to create a huge mess today, but we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you how to use your pigment sprinkles and make alcohol ink. So that's going to be later in the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to show you some cards that I've made with the pigment sprinkles. I'm actually just going to move them out of the way. Now, I do apologize for this video being a week late. I did post on my Facebook group and my Facebook page that I ran out of paper right when I was ready to film because it took me about two days of trying different concoctions and mixtures and whatnot and testing to get this together for you guys. And then I ran out of paper. So I did venture into the elements and I'm safe and I'm healthy, but I did find paper, thank God. So I'm going to show you some of the cards I made. This first one is just a pigment sprinkles direct to paper. And I'll show you that one first. And I did two cards with this. So I did the Granny Apple Green and I did the Gorgeous Grape. And I really love the way that they turned out. They're super pretty. Um, I used a die here. I'll list everything down below with the butterflies. And then this is a die. And then I just did my embossing technique where I put all of the embossing powder on the actual die. So that one was super fun. And then I should have showed you this one first. I did some backgrounds, um, which I'm going to show you how to create these nice wispy backgrounds. And I also did a pigment sprinkles baby wipe stamp, like how you, you know how the baby wipe technique, you make your own stamp. So I did that and that was super fun. I won't show you that in the video today, but if enough people comment and ask for it, I will show you how I did that. So these ones here were probably my favorites. Um, the blue is the Bermuda Bay, and I've kind of learned that the pigment sprinkles don't like the 91% or higher alcohol that most of you that have used alcohol inks would be used to. So we kind of got to break, we kind of got to break the rules today. So I played with them and whatnot, because as you can see, it kind of leaves this grainy texture. And what I learned is these are watercolor sprinkles. So they like water. They like to activate with water. So 91% alcohol or higher has 91% alcohol, 9% water. Or if you have 100% alcohol, there's zero water. And if there's no water, it's very difficult to get the pigment sprinkles to bloom and do what you want them to do. So that was trial and error, but I just love the way these cards turned out. And then I just took a um, jelly roll pen and I just made some dots. Um, you can actually use some tools and make dots on your water or on your alcohol ink techniques without you can you can remove the alcohol if you will and if enough people ask me in the comments how to make all of these little dots and bubbles and things in your alcohol ink techniques I will make another video for that so what I did is those there I made cards out of but I also got to playing and I got a little mark on here but that's okay so I just got playing trying to make some bubbles so if you want to see how I did this again ask me in the comments below and if enough people ask I will do an entire video on how I did these bubbles um, this turned out to be a hot mess but I can die cut flowers and things out of here and, and I won't use it for an entire background because I made gold I made some gold alcohol ink. Um, I've got, you hear that little ball? I went to my sweetie and he gave me a couple little ball bearings. So I was able to get a ball for these. But if you've seen my um, splatters and shimmer spray video, you know that I use these Shin Han Art Rich Gold Powders. So I thought, why can't I make alcohol ink out of them? And the first one turned out super good. You can feel it on here. Um, I'm not sure if you can feel the um, gold alcohol ink made by the big designer companies, but you can feel this one on here, but it is so stinking pretty. And then I noticed um, after I'd used it for a while that it started to kind of bunch a little bit. So I've got a little bit of bunching here and it feels a little bit like sandpaper there, but the rest of the areas, oh my gosh. They're so, so pretty. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use two different kinds of paper today. 
The first one I'm going to use is this Jot brand five piece poster board. And this comes from the Dollar Tree. And there's uh, five pieces that are 11 by 14 inches in here. And what I do is I cut them down to five by five and a quarter. So out of this, I get 20 sheets for $1.25, which turns out to be 16 cents per square. Uh, well, it's not quite a square, right? But you guys get the point. The other one I'm going to use, this one is craft plastic, okay? This is 25 sheets of 12 by 12. And what I do is I cut them six by six, all right? So I get four nice six by six pieces. It gives me a little bit broader of an area to work with. And this is this is made for alcohol inks. It is amazing. So this here, the plastic sheets, 25 of them, are $32.76 on Amazon. I will leave some links for them below um, because Stampin' Up! carries nothing like this, right? So 25 of these cut into four will give you 100 six by six pieces. And that works out to 32 cents a piece, all right? So I'm just gonna show you because a lot of people are gonna go, what about the UPO paper? And I did buy the UPO paper and there's absolutely no difference between this and the UPO paper. And this stuff is amazing too. The only difference with the poster board is you can't wipe everything off clean um, like you can with the plastic, okay? If you, once it's on there, you can't just use alcohol and take it all off. So whatever's on there is gonna be your project. But the UPO paper, this comes 10 pieces for $28.67. So you can cut these into four and you can cut them six by four and a half. And that works out to per square is $1.39 per square. So, I mean, you guys do the math. $1.39 a piece for this, 32 cents each for your six by six squares of this or 16 cents. Now I'm gonna suggest you start on the poster board because I'm gonna show you on the poster board. I'm gonna show you on the craft plastic as well. But you can also use, oops, you need that one there. You can also use um, wax paper or a tile or any kind of little non-porous surface just to kind of learn your how to do what you're doing or just go straight in with the poster board because you can't mess it up. And if you don't like what you came out with, then you're just gonna use that to die cut out your flowers, leaves, or whatever dyes you have just to piece on your cards. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the craft paper. Okay, the plastic sheets. These are the ones that are 32 cents each. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt, actually, you know what? The first card I made was on poster board. So I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do the poster board and I'm going to show you what I did to achieve this. Now, here's the problem with all of my testing and alcohol inks and, or the alcohol inks I created, um, and all the different, uh, densities of alcohol, whether it be 50, 70, 91, or 99, because I had all four, I've kind of lost track of what I had mixed in what in the beginning. So I, since then, went and labeled all of my alcohol inks because I can write it down, all right? So my frost I'm making with 70%, um, because my frost is what I, I remember using on here, and the 70%, I know I didn't do 50, because you want enough water to, to kind of dissolve all of your crystals, so oh, all of your pigments anyway. So I'm trying to write them down now, but I didn't have everything written down in the beginning, but I'm gonna do my best to recreate this as closely as possible for you. So I'm gonna put on my gloves. Like my hands are an absolute mess from, I have been at this since, <laughs> last Monday and it's now Saturday. So you should see, I have a stack, you guys. Actually, I'll show you. This thing is getting so full, look at this. I have so many different things in here to just pull from to, you know, what have you. I don't throw anything out. And um, the card that I made on Monday's video, you're gonna learn how to make the background in this video, like I mentioned in the previous video. So what we're gonna start with is the gorgeous grape and I'm just going to apply this a little bit on the bottom less is more you can always add extra but it's very difficult to take it off once you've already started it so what I've learned with my playing around here is if I come in with water first I can kind of activate these crystals 
and then I can come in with my frost white shimmer spray and I did have a video on how I made this I'll put it up above but the alcohol helps the pigments do different things than just straight water so when you spray this there's two ways to spray it there's the traditional way of spraying this way so you're pushing everything and everything's kind of flying on the paper and it will go all over your whole craft area I'm not going to do that I'm going to go straight down because it will create a splatter but I don't want to move all of my pigment to the top of the page yet so I'm just going to activate them like this and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to saturate them with my crafts this white frost white Okay, so now I'm liking what I'm getting. Now you can do two things here. You can grab a straw, and I suggest putting washi tape around the part that's going to go in your mouth, or you can get one of these little um, lens cleaner things. I got a pack of three of these off Amazon, super cheap. I'll link them below. But I'm going to use this, and I have this on a Lazy Susie because it's easier for me to move it around, and then I can try to keep my hand out of the screen for you guys. So all I'm going to do is put all of this ink back on to my paper and I just want to start moving it up to about here and I want to kind of have it even so I want to try and get some in here as well now to create these top big splatters what you do is you come in close and you, you push this super hard like this, okay? And then you get that splattery effect, right? So I'm going to gently kind of move some of this color around here because I like the, the texture and the swirl in here. Now, that one went up way too high, but that's okay. It never comes out the same way both times, but... This looks like a little dinosaur. This would be cute with our little dinosaur set. I can't remember the name of it right now. but And I like these little stag lights, or what do you call those that are kind of forming there? So I'm just going to soften this area up a little bit here. And I am holding this tilted up because I don't want this going any higher. I'm going to move some of this color into this spot here. Move a little bit of that over just to give it a little texture. I'm loving that. Now, if you don't want the color there, you can go the opposite way and you can start pushing it away. You can always add a little more of your spray. And I like that it's given that like a whole bunch of confetti look up here. I kind of like that. So, I think I'm about done. One of the things I've learned doing this, guys, and you're going to do this, and you're going to go, oh my God, Cindy Lynn, I feel your pain, is you get it somewhere and you're like, I kind of like that, but it's so addicting that you don't want to stop and you just keep going and adding more and then you're like, oh, I wrecked it. When you think you're there, stop, okay? Because these are not as forgiving as the next stage when I show you how to do the alcohol inks with this. They're nowhere near as forgiving. So I'm going to push a little bit of this color up off the tape. Just see now I've created these lines and I don't want those. So I'm just really loving the way that looks. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to set this aside to dry. Now the 50% is what I use to clean. All right. So I'm going to wipe that down and then I'm just going to use a chamois just to get it clean. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our, um, oh, this isn't one. That's the wrong one. I pulled this out. I tried this, um, making alcohol ink from shop Sharpie markers. That's a beautiful color, but you know what? I, I'm going to highly suggest you stay away from it and I will show you why. This is Sharpie marker alcohol ink. And can you see this brown tinge on here? It is awful. Like when the Sharpie dries, it leaves this brown, icky tinge all over it. And I probably played with this one way too much, but I did write on there. But I wanted to save it to use and show in videos this awful 
tinge of dry ickiness and I don't even know what I could do with that to save it but all of the colors left this ugly tinge and I didn't like it so I'm actually going to be dumping out all my Sharpie stuff and that was the last one and it accidentally got mixed in here so I've labeled these and what I've done is I purchased these little bottles off of Amazon and I will link these below they are amazing because they have this tiny little applicator um, end on it and they come with your little this little thingy I don't have this one out and they even give you a bunch of these little funnels which is like so super cool because check that so when I was putting in my powders to make alcohol ink or my pigment sprinkles you can just put it right in there to get it in the hole so awesome so as hard as it was I saved one color to show you guys how I make them so I'm gonna hold this over top of here and I'm just gonna sprinkle this in and I'm gonna put a fair amount and then I'll lift it up and show you what, how much I put in kind of a tedious little job but I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna tap on this to get all that powder going so now I'll show you I don't know how easy it's gonna to be to see but I mean I don't even know how to tell you what's what the measurement would be so if I shake it it pretty much covers the whole outside of the bottom so I mean I wouldn't even say it's there's not even a quarter teaspoon in there, guys. You know me and measurements. I, I just, I don't. Now, I'll tell you what I am good at. I am good at using the syringe to put the um, alcohol in here because being a retired nurse, mill, milliliters and cc's and all that, I know. But this stuff, I don't know how to measure that. I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up this syringe all the way full which is a little bit more than 12 milliliters okay so I'm gonna grab my 70% alcohol so I'm trying to bend this because I'm getting down on my alcohol here but I'm gonna try and squeeze this in and make sure that I'm getting the edges of this little um, funnel so that I'm not wasting any of that pigment and these clean up beautifully. I just wash them in the bathroom sink up here. I spray a little alcohol and then I'm good to go. All right, now I don't want this tip getting any color on it at all because you're gonna use this to keep putting in your alcohol and you can transfer color and then you'll be a sad panda if you make your pink, purple, or worse. I mean, um, yesterday I want to add um, some more Bermuda Bay to my Bermuda Bay and I added gorgeous grape. So I had to start all over again. <laughs> I was a sad panda. So now I'm going to put this on here so that this little piece is facing down because you're going to flip it up to go on to the needle, right? The needle end. And the end of this, just in case you're curious what it's similar to, it's almost exactly the same as our fine tip glue pen okay and don't be too stressed about leaving this open um, because it's so small your alcohol won't evaporate I mean I left most of them open last night I was up here playing and um, Todd came up and he's like let's go play crib with your dad because I had my dad for the weekend right so we all went and played crib with dad and I left them open all night and I had too many too many crown royals and forgot to I forgot to turn the lights out and everything in the studio so but it was a good night I wasn't feeling so great when I woke up this morning but you know it's all good okay so there's my yellow yay I haven't had any daffodil to work with I've only had the mango so you can see the difference in those so I'm going to show you one on the poster board and I'll show you one on the you uh, sorry Yupo on the craft plastic now one thing I have learned about the poster board is the dark color especially the the grape if you put it on directly it will stain a circle on your poster board it won't do like a regular alcohol does and kind of disperse so let me get all of these open I haven't labeled this one yet but that's okay I should be able to remember what it was so I'm gonna um, only use the purple if I put down alcohol first so I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'll, I'll actually just show you. So I'm going to put one dot there 
and then I'm going to take my 91%. So we mix these with 70% to help activate the pigment crystals, but we move it around on our paper with 91%. And you can use 99, but again, that's only 1% out water. I found the 91 works better when using pigment sprinkles. So now I'm going to put a couple dots there, and then I'm going to put my ink on it. So using the same blower, I'm just going to show you, well actually before you blow, you usually always put a little bit of alcohol anyway, but I'm going to move that off and you can see that right here, see that line right there? It left a stain. Okay, now here it's not quite as noticeable, so I'm not too mad at that. I can kind of move it around here and it, it hides in, right? But over here, it's pretty dark and predominant, predominant. So wasn't overly thrilled with that. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the Bermuda Bay. And what I found is, this is just my own personal preference, but I like to let it kind of dry a little before I come in with my next color. Um, and you can put alcohol on the paper first, or you can just put your inks right down and then put alcohol. You can decide what, whatever you like. You are going to play so much with this, and I'm going to wait and love hearing in the comments what you guys thought and what you made. And you know what? If you're on um, my Facebook group or on Instagram, please tag me. I would love to see what you created and I'll come and make a comment. So it's my inky fingers on Instagram or you can follow on my Facebook page. All the links are in the banner on the main page of my channel. So have a look see there. Okay, so I like that, but I, I wanna get a little bit more movement here. So I'm gonna come in a little bit more alcohol and I'm just going to give the alcohol a second. Okay. And you see here this blue that's coming out of the Bermuda Bay? Love that blue that's coming out of there. And you know what else I found? The color of the pigments. You're going to notice if you use your pigments with straight water, you're going to get one color. And if you use alcohol, you're going to get a completely different color. And you guys are going to see that on the last project I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to leave this one be because I, I, I could go forever on here and change a lot more, but I want to give you guys, I want you to see what it does on the craft plastic. So this one's the craft plastic, all right? So I'm going to use the pink, and I haven't done Daffodil Delight yet, and the pink, oh my gosh, you guys, this one's my favorite so I got to use the pink and I'm going to try to bring in my gold and see if I can get it to behave. Um, I don't know if it'll behave like it did in the very beginning or not, but we shall see. And then sometimes I go and I go to pick this up and I have this beautiful piece and I picked up Bermuda Bay or the purple, the grape, one of the two, and I just squished it on there like it was alcohol. And oh my gosh, so make sure you know what you're grabbing here before you grab them. I just love the way this pink works. Oh, it's so pretty. And it goes on so neon. Isn't that weird? But it doesn't stay neon at all. Now, these little things here, those are created from spraying your ink where there's no alcohol. So if you like that effect, what you'll do is let me find where there's no alcohol here I don't have many spaces there's one so if you hit it hard see you create that because there's no alcohol there if you don't like that just come in with your alcohol and then just take it out so I'm not going for that kind of look on this piece so I'm going to take them out and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here so let's dry get this drying now if you happen I'll show you just really quick um, I tried to keep this tutorial as simple for supplies as I could so you don't have to be running out and buying things you can use the straw right works just fine 
What I found though, is I have a hard time breathing in, moving away and breathing in, and I get like high on alcohol fumes. And if I'm gonna get all fuzzy in the mind, I wanna like drink my alcohol, not inhale it. So I don't like the taste it leaves in my mouth. And you may be able to figure out a way to make it work for you, but I was struggling. I also happen to have an airbrush. Um, I got this on Amazon. So what you do is you just kind of activate your little thingy and it just pushes, you can hear that. Just pushes air out and you can move stuff around on your paper with just this, which is kind of cool, right? So I'm gonna come in now with some yellow. I'm gonna shake this a little bit more. I haven't used the Daffodil Delight, so I don't I have no clue what this is gonna do, but we're gonna add just a few, and then I'll come in with some alcohol and my blower. Now this is creating this like weird neon color. It's like, wow. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try my gold and put it in the yellow and then put a little bit more yellow and see Okay, see now that I put the um, yellow on top, do you see how the gold all kind of formed in together there? That I like. I wish I could make it do that each time. I don't, this is a homemade gold, right? So trial and error. So there it created a nice circle. So once you've got it bunching up together like that, then when you move it around, it stays together. See, I'm getting a line here, and that's what I like. But I do get these little greens that wanna kinda hang out too, which I don't know why it does that. Probably the mixture, but you still get this beautiful, beautiful gold that I love. I'm gonna put some more pink over here. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've tried the foiling, you know, you put the foil over top of the sticky parts. And if it's, when I say sticky, I say sticky, it's supposed to be like, if you were to leave orange juice on the kitchen counter, you know when it gets sticky tacky, that's the time that you want to put your um, foil on your alcohol inks. But what I find is with these, they never really get that sticky because they're not alcohol inks. They're water pigment sprinkles that we have kind of manipulated with alcohol to make this, right? So see how all this gold is sitting all on top here, all on top of the, the alcohol. I'm loving that. So I don't know what this is going to look like when it's dry, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to create some of those wisps because why not? And just get a little bit of and a neat texture here coming on the outside. Just to show you guys what it does. I could see cutting flowers out of here or even just cutting flowers out of vellum. Um, the Painted Poppies uh, die set and putting them over top would be super pretty. That actually almost looks like one big flower there. I could probably go in with some dark um, in the middle and make it. What happens if I just put a couple of gold there? No, no, I don't want you to go that way. I wanted a center. See what I mean when you get it somewhere that you like it? You're like, oh, what if I do this? And then it's like, no, I didn't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one dry so I can show you guys the last technique. Here we go. Got some really cool action happening in there that I'm really liking. So I'm super, super excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, definitely tag me on Instagram or leave me a link down below in the comments. I have no problem with that. I, I'm here to share the love. If Even if you have another channel and you made a video, I won't feel like you're trying to steal my viewers or anything like that. Um, sharing is caring, right? So share away. I would love, love, love. And if you think of some other, you know, court like um, recipes and things like that, 
let me know because you know what then we can all share in that and teach each other so for this one I've got out this acrylic um, this used to be a stamp positioner from Fiskars and it came with those four little orange spongy things and you put your stamp on this side and then you would position it and then you would push it down um, you know I know so ancient right and you know what so many of you guys if you're like me you hoard stuff you're gonna have one of these you're gonna go yes I have one and the nice thing is this side has this extra piece of plexiglass and these if you take out the sponge you have four little water wells so you could put paints in there you could tape down your watercolor paper here and you have a perfect perfect watercolor paint board I'm gonna use the other side because it's really smooth this is super dirty because I have some pigments already on here and I'm not gonna waste them I'm gonna use them so I'm gonna put away the alcohol inks and I'm gonna pull out the pigments and what I want to do is pull out my card but I'm afraid because um, yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to get everything dirty, but I want to, I want to create, um, some leaves that coordinate with this paper out of the, uh, painted poppies designer series paper set. And I was able to create, this was the one I created to make, Oh, I'm getting very brave and I'm going to grab this white card. That's, this is the background I created and I'm going to show you guys how I did that. But these, I could cut leaves out of here because they match this paper so, so well. So I'm going to try to recreate this. Look at this. Oh, so cool. I just love these backgrounds. So anyhow, we're going to try and recreate that. So I know I need Bermuda Bay. Now, I cannot stress enough that less is more here. So I'm going to try to just put a little, little bit and I want to go with Bermuda Bay. I definitely want my granny apple green. And I'm also going to put in a teensy little bit of melon mambo. Just a little bit there and a little bit there. Now, here's what I found. I'm going to activate this with water, which is here. I'm going to activate it with water first and I'm going to spray straight down. And I'm just spraying lightly and you're probably asking yourself why I'm not using the Stampin' Up spritzers. Love the Stampin' Up spritzers. I have many of them, but I use them for my splatters and I find that the projectile that comes out of here is super, super, super strong and it blows everything every, every, everywhere. <laughs> so as much as I love these and as much as I think everybody should have them because these are great for your splatters that I do on most of my videos, this, I got a horde of these at the Dollarama or Dollar Tree, I don't know where, they came with this god-awful stuff in it. I guess you're supposed to spray it on your body. I wouldn't spray it on a dog I didn't like. It was stinky. I think it was supposed to be rose. Um, I dumped it down the drain and my drain in my bathroom smelled like that for like a week. It was, it was, it was, it was terrible. But anyhow, so that's where I got these and then I peeled the labels off. But it has a very nice misty spray. So now that I've got my water on there and I've pretty much got everything activated, I'm going to come in not with the 91%. I'm going to come in with the, well, hmm. I'll do, I'll do this one with the frost white. I was going to just do the alcohol because this is going to give me a sheen, right? So, okay, let's just do it with this one. I wasn't going to, but you can see now when you add the alcohol, everything beads like crazy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to sop up a couple of these really strong beads because you know what they're going to do? They're going to create this really dark, dark spot. And I'm just going to pounce this around. And I'm happy right about... <laughs> Cindy Lynn, stop pouncing. Okay. All right. We stopped pouncing. Now, I'm good there. Now, the um, poster board. I had some ends because I had to figure out how to cut it to get the most out of it. Ended up with all these ends. And then these are the leftovers because when you cut them five and a half by five, you are left with some. And these are just all the leftover ends. So these I've decided I'm going to use for backgrounds. So all I'm going to do, and I have it in my head that one side is shinier than the other. I don't know. You tell me if you agree, but I think this is the shiny side. And you know what? Hold on. Because these are leaves. I just Bear with me. I just got to kind of pounce some of that pink out. Okay, so I'm going to come in. Now I'm going to push in because I don't want all my ink going out. And you can use a card as well. 
It does want to curl super fast, but the nice thing is this will dry completely flat, and I'll show you that. Now, the card is great because you can kind of push everything back in. Okay, and then put that there. Where's my dirty one? Just going to move some of this around because I've got lots of color in here still. And I'm going to come in with another full size sheet. And I swear this is the shiny side and this one isn't. So that's how I'm going to go. Oh, I should have put a little bit more water on this one and I forgot. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. See how easy this Lazy Susie is? It's going to make your life so much easier. So I've got a really strong line there. And I'm not quite getting the color that I'm looking for. So I'm going to kind of go in with my blue a little bit more and my green a little more. Okay. And my water. And then I'm just going to go in with my um, alcohol after this. So I'm getting a few really dark spots. I'm going to use the 91 no, I'm going to use the 70%. See how it makes it all bead like that? Love it. And then I'm going to pick up just a little bit out of some of these areas. And maybe now I'll go in with a little bit of pink here in that little bit of green and that bit of green. And then we'll spray our 70% again. bring in some of this because there's really no rhyme or reason right all right let's move some of this around now let's just go for it let's just get her in here and then I'm going to push all the ink towards the inside and then it'll curl for me and then I can pick it up easy. Oh, that one is super cool. I really like that. And they dry back quite different. Um, I think this one's my shiny side right here. Let's see. Oh, that one's so cool too. This is nowhere near the color I was going for <laughs> at all. But you know what? This is so addicting. I can't help myself. All right, so let's spray the 70% just to kind of break this up a little bit. And then we'll come in with a big one. And I'll push it all in. And then I'll see what color I need to add to this. Oh, I love that. Can you see leaves out of that? I'm going to show you these when they're dry, guys. So don't, don't worry. I will show you. I need some more blue, though. So let's put some more blue in here. And we'll push this stuff in because that will mix in with the blue. We'll just get it kind of all into the center. And then I'm going to spray it with my 70% and it will all spread out on us. See all of that? That's what I want. I want that stuff. So I'm going to pick up most of this, most of that, and then go in again right here. This is an old expired card, by the way, but I thought, you know, just for all the, the crazy hacker people, I'd save them the time and put some tape on it so that they didn't have to freeze frame the video a million times to find out that it didn't work anyway. <laughs> Maybe I should have left it just to teach them a lesson, right? <laughs> okay, oh, I love that one. All right, I could go forever here. I'm going to add a little bit of pink and then call it good. And then I'm going to bring in all this other color because this is good color here. We don't want to lose that. Oh, I think this one's going to be pretty because it's got some teals and stuff going in here. 91%. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Have I been putting 91? I'm supposed to put 70. Oh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to look back on the video and go, Cindy Lynn. This one here might be super pretty because I've got so many pinks going in there now and purples. 
Oh, that one's so cool. Now, another thing you can do is take your frost white and you can always spray on here and let it drip off back onto here and look at the effect that that gives you. You get a whole new effect. So let's put this one here. And this is such a pretty color going in here. I don't want to wreck it, but I'm going to put a little bit of green and a little bit more green. It's so hard to stop. I mean, really. And then I'm going to go with some frost white just because I can. And it looks like I made mud. I don't know, but you know what? See, that feels like my shiny side. I just can't get over how these feel so different. Even with gloves on, I don't know. Tell me if I'm like just being crazy or if you guys think that there's a difference in the way it feels too. I don't know what's going to happen here. This one's kind of starting to look a little bit like I should have stopped. I don't know. We shall see. Oh, look at that color. Hey, but you know what? I need a color for the pineapple in the, um, in the tropics dyes. So this one... That might be it, guys. I got some brown. You should see this other one. You'll see this card I'm going to make. I'm going to take one more off of here, and I'm not going to add any more ink or any, any anything because I have somehow created brown, and I need brown. Look at this brown. I need brown for the um, pineapple. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the shimmer. You know what? I'm telling you, shimmer spray changes the color of these pigment sprinkles. It is so bizarre. Just that frost white paint in there. And then 90% changes the color one way, 70% changes it another way. It's like you gotta you gotta play with it and find your happy space. Oh my god, I'm gonna get the best brown out of here for my pineapple. Yes, I love it. I want some more texture in there. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be so awesome for the pineapple. I'm so excited. I have this other one that I, I did and I thought it would be perfect for the top of the pineapple. Right here. I did this one and I thought I could cut the top out of it. But now I'm looking at them together and that might be a little bit too light. So I'll have to see. All right, now for our results. Let's get rid of this guy because he looks dangerous. He's going to get me all inky, right? Okay, results. So this one is very similar. You can see in here, see you've got... Now this here um, will probably dry a little flatter maybe. No, it's pretty dry. Run it through your big shot and I'll show you what I do. And this works every time. So I use my cutting or the magnet and then I put down my cutting plate. Do you guys remember when I got these? It wasn't that long ago and oh my gosh, it's already all ruined, but that's okay. Now these are the number one tabs out of, you know, those plates that all of this is attached and they flip up. So this is two of the number ones. So I put this down, I put this down and then I put, let's pretend I'm going to do this one. Um, quick tip if there's any ink or things on here put it in a little sandwich of wax paper or tissue paper um, especially the ones um, where's that gone especially these ones with the gold because the gold will transfer to your plate and then you'll not realize and then you'll go to die cut something and um, or it'll transfer on here and you'll use this for something so that's my sandwich two number one tabs anyhow you'll get gold everywhere right so I just close this all up now wheel it through so there's your sandwich so this one I do love the way that turned out and you're gonna trim that down I'm way higher here than I was here but I mean oh, that is so pretty with all of that shimmer in there I love that and you can do the green as well okay and I just I created this one and I just did some embossing and whatnot. So there's those two that look like that one. And then for these, I didn't really even use those colors and come close because this um, was mixing the pigment sprinkles with 91% alcohol and they didn't really react the way they should. So we changed it, right? So this is the one, the first background that we did. 
and that turned out so pretty I mean I really like that and this paper is so super smooth and flat and this one's the poster board right and then we did the Yupo paper and then look at that oh my gosh I don't know if I'm gonna use this as a background or if I'm gonna cut some flowers out of that but it just oh it's so pretty I just love it so the examples again were the rainbow I would love to see your rainbow that you come up with. And then that was just the pink. And then this was the purple, um, the gorgeous grape and the Bermuda Bay together with some gold. And I think I kind of went overboard on that one. So not quite sure what I'm gonna use that for. And then of course you can make your bubbles. So if you wanna see a video on how to do that, you definitely gotta ask me in the comments, enough people and I will make one as well as how to use the baby wipes to make stamps with the pigment sprinkles to create these ones. So there you guys have it. Thanks. Oh, wait, I told you I would show you these, right? So I'll show you some of these really quick. So this one created a nice solid line here. Do you see that? So that one's kind of cool. Like it's kind of, if you cut it out this way and then follow it along here, it's kind of like a wave, right? So they all turn out, this one's kind of a hot mess. So, I mean, you could do some ink blending around there and you can kind of create a galaxy, but these didn't turn out too bad at all for leaves, right? Oh, Cindy Lynn, you are going to drip some ink on your new cards and then you're gonna be mad. But I mean, I'm not too mad at these and these ones are so awesome. There's my pineapple dye, yay, I'm so excited. So I have to show, and you know what? One of these would be the perfect topper to the pineapple. I mean, even this one sideways, like here top of the pineapple I mean the possibilities are endless right so nevertheless I'm gonna let you guys run and start playing definitely 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 find me on Instagram and tag me or tag me down below with your link I can't wait to see what you guys create so until I see you again take care happy stamping